building the vehicle of the future. Many in the auto industry and the tech industry are in a race to become first. Now, we're currently standing inside the climatic wind tunnel at the University of Ontario. Companies from around the globe bring their electric and their autonomous vehicles here to test them in extreme weather conditions. And suffice it to say, the winds of change are blowing when it comes to the automotive industry. We can simulate rain testing, snow testing, ice. We can create pretty much any condition. They want to see you know, what the battery range is, how turning on the heating, how much power it's going to draw and affect the overall range of the vehicle in these harsh temperatures. The technology is windy and wild. When it comes to which car companies are testing their vehicles here, it's top secret. Right oh, we got companies from all around the world. I'd love to tell you all of them, but I can't. <laughs> You're sworn to secrecy. Sworn to secrecy. It's a rat race, and almost every auto company has an electric vehicle model out in the market, and it's practically available to all of us. Just down the hall at the University of Ontario is the Energy Research Lab. Inside, students and professor Sheldon Williamson are pushing the limits of lithium batteries and how far they can take you inside an electric vehicle. It has parts manufacturers banging down the door. We're talking a, re uh, a heavy reduction in cost and even double the range. So up to 1,000 and 1,200 kilometers on a single charge. Technology that we develop here in our lab, in fact, we know that we can get that today. I'm a father. I have two boys. I might need a car in two years. How many more fuel-driven cars will I purchase before I purchase an electric? You would buy... At least one, I'd say one and a half, <laughs> if that makes sense. All this work is being done in Oshawa, just down the road from the General Motors assembly plant, where yesterday line workers producing internal combustion engine vehicles learned they'll be out of a job within the year. As GM says it's shifting its focus and money towards a brave new automotive world. Frankly, the future is going to be electric. The future is going to be autonomous and only certain companies will be there. With the electric vehicle race in full flight for automotive and tech giants, the number of battery-powered vehicles on our roads is set to skyrocket. Right now, less than 1% of the vehicles on the road are electric. Yes. How do you see that changing and how could that increase and in what time frame? How soon? So my thinking would be in the next 10 to 12 years, below 1% to I would say about 10% at least. So in 15 to 20 years, where does that spike go? from 10%? Quarter, quarter of the vehicles at least. From electric technology to self-driving vehicles ahead on City News, how close we are to seeing autonomous cars become a reality on our roads. Earlier on City News, we took you inside the climatic wind tunnel as I was getting blown around. It's a space where companies bring their electric vehicles to test them in the elements. Well, the folks here at the University of Ontario say in the next 10 years, 10% 10 of all cars on the road will be electric. And when it comes to self-driving cars, they're not far behind. How soon are autonomous vehicles realistically part of our daily lives? So I would say um, give it another decade because there are safety issues, there are uh, blockages socially, auto manufacturers are already deploying them in test tracks. That prediction coming on the same week that General Motors closed down shop at its Oshawa assembly plant and four others in the U.S., with the focus now shifting to electric and self-driving vehicles. The auto industry is not going to stay the same any more than we were going to stay with horses back in the 1800s. Industry observers say Ford is leading right now in autonomous vehicle tech. The company plans to have fully self-driving cars on the roads by 2021. So what is a self-driving car? There's five levels of autonomous car, and some of them are already on the road. Level one is driver assistance, example, cruise control. Level two, partial automation, for example, parking assist. Level three, conditional automation. A car can make some decisions. Level four, high automation. Car can handle some difficult situations. Level five, full automation. No need for a human driver. I would say don't be afraid. This is a perfectly functional, fully functional vehicle. Inside Professor Sheldon Williamson's Energy Research Lab, his students are also creating technology for driverless electrical cars so they can have wireless charging capabilities. Underneath could be what is underneath the road. Underneath the road. And this would be a vehicle coming on top. So the roads 
um, will have dedicated lanes. With that comes the opportunity to charge electric vehicles, as I said. So wireless charging is something uh, that we are also working on and several other researchers are working on to charge electric vehicles on the fly. While they're driving. While they're driving or at a light or at, uh, through a driving lane. It's a matter of uh, social acceptance. It's, it's only in our minds, I would say, that we are not letting it happen and policymakers, you know, uh, who have to take that next step. It's always the first step and then it, it's, it's a domino effect, right? When it comes to the race to release a self-driving autonomous vehicle, General Motors says they'll have a fleet ready by next year. In Oshawa, Adrian Gobriel, City News.